Have you ever needed custom data sets to test your applications? There are tons of tools out there to do this, but not many for graph databases. In this video, we'll show you how to easily build your own graph data generator. In relational database, you would normally load this data into tables using bulk or batch operations or even row by row. We'll show you how to do this in graph databases. Remember that all the code and assets we use in this video have been deployed in the previous video from this series. So just click on the pop-up banner in case you missed it. We'll use Amazon Neptune Serverless since we assume we're going to have a picky workloads, okay? similar to this. For this, we are limiting our code to use auto-scaling min and max NCUs to adapt the graph databases so it can work automatically based on the workload's needs. But don't worry, as this is super simple. Each NCU or, Net or Neptune capacity unit consists of two gigabytes of memory, the associated CPU, and networking. Let's now have a look at how to load data in our graph. In this demo, we are using Gremlin query language. This means we will need a format like this to load our nodes. And to connect those nodes, we need an edges file just like this, which will create those two CSV files, one for our nodes and the other for our edges. This will allow us to create a few thousand connected nodes for our scooter's use case. Let's take a look. Let's now open our data generation stack. So go to this directory and let's open this file, please. And as you can see here, we are using a Lambda layer. You know, very often your apps will share some common dependencies. Uh, so instead of maintaining this uh, for each application or module, uh, what you can do is simply create one centralized Lambda layer for those. And this can be reused by many projects. Uh, we're going to use our managed AWS SDK for Pandas. So we can use Python Pandas for our scooters data generation. Just bear in mind that for larger data sets, uh, most likely Apache Spark or Polars will work better. And in that case, you can use a service like Amazon EMR or AWS Glue to generate those larger amounts of data for your testing environments. Normally, you need to package your dependencies to deploy your compiled programs. Uh, but as you can see here, we are using our Lambda Python construct. This means that whatever we include in the requirements right here, uh, it will be packaged as uh, uh, in, in a zip file, as in this case, Python, any, any tree, Python library. Also, see how these three libraries are not installed locally. This is thanks to our Lambda layer and our Lambda Python CDK construct, which is the one that is going to create a deployment package for us uh, using our requirements.txt through our Docker container. Uh, all this, all this used to be a manual process, you know, very prone to human errors. Uh, but now uh, this Python process does all the zip file that pip install uh, for the libraries and upload this to AWS Lambda. And now please open your uh, web browser uh, or get back to it. And let's now open our AWS console to generate uh, our graph data. So please go to CloudFormation. Uh, let me just uh, move this a little bit. Confirm, by the way, your AWS region. And if you go to the data stack right here, uh, let me minimize this and go to outputs. And this is the function that we are going to execute uh, to, to generate our nodes and edges in Amazon S3. So what you can do is you can just copy this value somewhere. And now please open a new terminal in Visual Studio. Uh, let me just copy the value myself. And now let me go to my Visual Studio code. And let me close these two tabs. And uh, please open a terminal and load our uh, environment. When we have done that, now make sure that you are using the correct CLI profile and that this is pointing to your uh, CDK environment. Uh, so let's call our data generation function here. Uh, but first, we need to collect the name, as I said, from the stack output right here. So let's just copy the name and paste it right here and run the Lambda function to generate uh, the data. So let me just add the profile. This should take a couple of seconds, so it's not running. Uh, this will create the nodes and edges for our scooters in the S3 bucket we have created. So as you can see, that has finished uh, with a status code 200, which is normally a good sign, as you probably know already. 
so let's open the CLI output just to make sure uh, that the Lambda response look clean. Uh, as you can see in a really bad format, is uh, that we have successfully generated that scooter data set to be eventually loaded. It's also giving us the located where this data has been generated. Uh, cool, so now we have the data for our graph. Now that we have our notes and edges files in CSV format stored in Amazon S3, we are now ready to load these graph data sets into Amazon Neptune. Open your AWS console and let's load our notes and edges. So let's go to CloudFormation. Let me just minimize and open the Neptune data stack because we are going to need the output from there. So let's go here. Let me just increase this a little bit so you can see a little bit more clear. Perfect. And now open another console with Amazon Neptune and go to Notebooks and now open Jupyter Environment. If you never worked with Jupyter Notebooks, uh, feel free to pause here and go to the documentation, documentation for Jupyter. It's an excellent way to code and visualize at the same time to document your projects. Uh, also, it's very useful to share the code and, and knowledge with other teams through its web application, as you can see right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a scooters folder. You can name it as you want. Uh, so let me just create that uh, 99 scooters. Let me do it that way. And now I have my new folder. And what we need to do now is uh, in the project that you have cloned, you will see uh, these Neptune notebooks right here. So what we need to do is just to drag and drop uh, this one, the 01. Uh, so you can just uh, open this uh, in the uh, file explorer. So basically, just drag and drop as I'm doing right now. OK, so drag and drop it. And now just double click on the notebook. And let's just start running this. We're going to execute each cell by pressing Shift Enter. Here we make sure that our cluster is healthy, for example, uh, as you can see here. Uh, this is showing the cluster we have created with some additional details. For example, if we are pointing to the correct endpoint, in this case, the writer endpoint and not the reader endpoint, um, that can be very useful, for example, for read-only applications. And in this case, we are pointed to the writer, so that's the correct one. Let's now insert two nodes just for you to get an idea of what we could do here. So. Uh, we are just inserting here a scooter with the property ID XYZ and the fuel percentage to 26 as a second property. Let's now add a scooter's warehouse. Uh, in these two cases, we are adding two vertices by specifying their IDs. Uh, we could ignore this, um, and Neptune will create one automatically for us. Okay, and in this case, I'm adding the IDs manual so we can see below uh, a clear example. All right. So uh, we're also adding the location in this case, as you can see here, in the warehouse located in Cambridge. And we're going to specify that this scooter XYZ is at the warehouse in Cambridge. That means that we are adding a, a niche to connect these two nodes. Uh, let's have a look uh, and let's run it. So this edge will also have the property of time and the geolocation. So let's execute this. And now what we can see here is let's query that specific scooter, the one that we have just created. Uh, let's go to the results. If we go to graph, this is thanks to the path method that we are using. We can see this uh, visualization. So let me just move this. And we can see this scooter XYZ is at 26% uh, fuel. And it's actually right now in Cambridge. Now. Let's say that you want to know at what time it arrived at this warehouse. So what we could do is we click on the edge and we can see it arrived at this specific timestamp right here. Here. Uh, this is the uh, property that we added for the edge previously. Now, if you scroll down, let's now load the real data. So import these libraries. And what we need to do now is in that console that you opened before, uh, copy these values, in this case, the cluster endpoint ID, and just replace them uh, uh, Replace them here. For example, the cluster ID, the ARN for the IAM role, right here, and the S3 bucket name. So copy and paste it right here. We know the region as we've been working in Oregon. Uh, so that's uh, US West 2, unless you change it. So pay attention to that. 
and let's carry on executing the cells. Each uh, cell we want to execute with shift enter. And now let's load the vertices data set. Uh, this is the data that we have created with our Lambda function in the previous video. So let's just create a simple function so we can retrieve the load status. Let me scroll down. So if it's in progress or if it has completed, you will, you will see it clearly in the Neptune loader response uh, with other additional details, as you can see here. Uh, as you can see, there are no errors. So we can, uh, if we see some duplicates, uh, that's fine. That's because the data that we are playing around with may generate some duplicates, uh, but that's fine. Don't pay too much attention to the number of records inserted or returned by the response, uh, because that's how Neptune works internally. If you're interested in that, uh, have a look to what Neptune Quad means in the documentation. Also remember that we're not inserting only scooters, uh, but also multiple parts for each scooter, like batteries or tires, and even incidents registered by customers. Bear in mind that this uh, API response is very useful to monitor your net Neptune loads. Uh, for example, if you need to troubleshoot, um, now let's connect the edges to connect all the nodes. So run this get load status response to monitor the edge uh, load progress. Uh, have a look to the files if you want. They are on S3. Uh, OK, so uh, let me just uh, have a look. But this is still in progress. Uh, something very useful in this API response is that uh, the, this load ID can be used, for example, as I said before, uh, if it's something it's failing, you can use that ID to troubleshoot that specific load. And now it's done. 70,000 edges in 15 seconds. And now let's just make sure that we have loaded all the data here. Uh, that seems to be OK. So as you can see, we have queried uh, just 100 random scooters. We can see, for example, its connections. Let me scroll down a little bit here and zoom in. Let's just have a scooter. Uh, let's just have a look to this scooter. Uh, let me move this to expand it. And as you can see, this scooter has a driver with this specific ID. Uh, also, what you can see is uh, this fleet owner. And you can also see that it has uh, suspension batteries. It has a journey in transit right here. So you can monitor that as a time series graph. Uh, a good example here is uh, to see how these two scooters, they both share the same fleet owner. Uh, for example, in this case, is Pegasus. Uh, so that's the company that, that owns these two sco scooters in our fake company. So let me scroll down a little bit. Finally, we can see uh, 50 random scooters here uh, that had any incidents. So let's have a look. Uh, have a go if you want and, and query uh, your own scooters. Let me zoom in. So you can see here uh, this scooter, let me just move it. It had an incident. And that incident actually has a legal case attached. So you can see for the details about that scooter, for example. Uh, have a go yourself again and, and write uh, your own queries. Now, in this part, is this, this is entirely optional. Uh, this is to reset the database. Uh, have a look to the documentation right here. But this mechanism bas basically deletes the entire graph. So all the data that it's in, in the Neptune database will be deleted. So for example, if you want to reload it again with your own data, just to practice, it's very useful. You can execute it, of course. Uh, but it's not recommended to execute it if you have loaded other type of data in this cluster. So what we have done here is analyze the graph data and visualize it using our Jupyter notebooks. Thanks for watching. Have a go yourself and create your own graph. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all. To learn more about Gremlin query language, why not check out the online book Practical Gremlin by our AWS colleague Kelvin Lawrence. The link is in the description below. In the next video, we'll use generative AI tools such as Amazon Q to query our scooter's graph. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to AWS Developers. See you in part three.